wrecked apartments are normal now in Gaza. This is the new normal. The Israelis hit the El Sousi mosque early Wednesday. For Gaza's children, the world has become frightening and surreal. They clamor for bread, the men giving it not keen to be identified. For Bisan, aged 10, life changed when those missiles hit. The mosque is completely down. I'm scared when I walk underneath, in case it falls, or they attack it again. There was nobody killed. There'd been a warning shot, but the apartment block is wrecked. Where you live? Up there. Up there? Yes. Hello. With complete composure, she showed me the ruins of her home. Thirty members of her family live in this house. This is your place, is it? Doors blown off. And this is where she sleeps. Wait a minute. What is it? That's your clothes. What else? There's your computer. What do you what do you learn there on the computer? English? English. It was two o'clock and my dad carried me on his shoulders and took me to the neighbor's house. Then there were two drone strikes and two from F-16s. The children here know the sound of every weapon. But Dad went back in, and I was crying, scared, because two more bombs went off. They keep calm, carry on, make bread. But her older brother has nightmares from the last invasion. These are children for whom nighttime brings terror most soldiers will never see. Dad, who survived the blast, is no supporter of Hamas, but he's outraged at what his kids are living through. Israel thinks by doing this they'll separate people from the resistance. But those who are against Hamas, who hate Hamas, now cling to them to protect us. They're saying go and hit Israel, just like they're hitting us. With 425,000 Palestinians displaced, half of them to places like this, the UNRWA school, it's the children who suffer most. When they can't cling on to their homes, families are crammed into places like this. Two thirds of all the people in Gaza are under 16, so this is a children's war. And for some, it's the third war they've seen in their lifetime. Yusuf is 15. His family have left Jabalia, which is a war zone, and now live among 20 people, well, in a corner. They shelled our house and destroyed it with a tank. I saw it on a small hill. I was a little bit young. He's telling me about events eight years ago. This family and this boy have lived through three invasions. I want to wake up one morning and be free like in other countries. I want to become a doctor to treat the wounded. UNRWA, the UN agency that runs this camp, describes the situation as a precipice. The camps are short of water. Disease is breaking out. Children are built resilient. So we won't know the long-term damage done to them for years.